Now is it on? Yes. So I'm just like a bad penny. I just keep coming back and back and back and back. So a question for you. How many heard the door slam just a minute ago? I'm not in a grumpy mood, let me tell you. But most church doors do not close that easily. Especially when it's going in and out of the chancel. They usually kind of stick a little bit. So I was a little surprised when it closed so, uh, so loudly. Anyway, for those of you who may be visiting with us this morning, I am Pastor Ronald Carnicum. I do reside in um, Hackensack. So it was just a nice drive over this morning, um, as it is every time I'm here. Um, so welcome to uh, First English in Dorset. You know, I'm in a different place every Sunday. So you notice I hesitate. It's like, where am I at today? I have this unfounded fear one morning I'm going to drive to the wrong church. I've never done that yet, but you know there's always, uh, there's always that uh, possibility, I suppose. But I'm usually pretty, pretty close on where I'm going. So, Anyway, it's good to have all of you here this morning. Um, today is November 5th, so it's the desi day designated in our um, Christian church year that we celebrate All Saints Day. Uh, I'll mention the sermon. All Saints Day is normally um, on November 1st, but November 1st doesn't fall on a Sunday every year. And because you have Reformation the day before, October 31st, so what happens is Reformation is celebrated on October 31st or the Sunday before. Reformation is celebrated on November 1st, or if that falls during the week, it's the Sunday after. So we're going to celebrate uh, the Festival of All Saints uh, today. Um, we're going to follow the order of service. That's on page 203, Divine Service Setting 3. When we get into the communion section and we sing the Holy, 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 then we have a... Oh, what did I say? Oh, we're Divine 4. Yes. Just follow Just follow page 203. We'll be, we'll be good. Yeah. That would be interesting if I did setting 3 and you guys were doing setting 4, wouldn't it? That would really confuse the organist. Um, anyway, when we get into, after the Holy, Holy, Holy and the service of Holy Communion, we get into the prayer of thanksgiving. There's a paragraph that's always said, and then there uh, are paragraphs in the middle that can be changed depending on what day you're celebrating. So there's a, spe there's a specific reading for, um, let me see, yeah, that's on page 209. There's a specific set of uh, uh, paragraphs in there for All Saints Day. So when we get into that part, and I start saying something that's not in the hymnal, if I don't tell you ahead of time, I know what you're going to think. Where is he? I better flip the page and find out where he's at. No, you don't have to flip the page. And so what will happen is I'll have the special section for All Saints Day, and then we will have continue with the Lord's Prayer like normal. So um, just a little bit different today. But otherwise, the bulk of the service setting four is uh, going to be just exactly as it's printed. Um, we'll do announcements and so forth afterwards. Of course, here's Bible study today. So, page 203, our opening hymn, number 600, uh, 670, You Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. <laughs>
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned against God in thought, word, in deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly the intro as printed on the insert in the bulletin today. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is the assembly of God. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Make melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above his head. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Confessions. In order that the subject might be made quite clear, we have shown well enough so far, both from testimonies of Scripture and arguments derived from Scripture, that we receive forgiveness of sins for Christ's sake through faith alone. We have shown that through faith alone we are justified, that is, unrighteous people are made righteous or regenerated. How necessary the knowledge of this faith is can be easily judged. Because Christ's office is recognized in this alone, we receive Christ's benefits by this alone. Only this teaching brings sure and firm consolation to pious minds. In the church, there must be the teaching by which the pious may receive the sure hope of salvation. For the adversaries give people bad advice when they tell them to doubt whether they receive forgiveness of sins. How will such persons sustain themselves in death who have heard nothing of this faith and think that they ought to doubt whether they receive forgiveness of sins? Besides, it is necessary that the gospel be kept in Christ's church, namely, the promise that sins are freely forgiven for Christ's sake. Those who teach nothing of this faith we speak about completely abolish the gospel. But the scholastics mention not even a word about this faith. Our adversaries follow them and reject this faith. Nor do they see that by rejecting this faith, they abolish the entire promise about the free forgiveness of sins and the righteousness of Christ. Here ends this, this morning's reading from the Confessions. The Old Testament reading appointed for the festival of all saints found recorded in Revelation chapter 7. <clears throat> After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to them, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the, lamb of the, in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading this morning from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Hallelujah verse.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. On page 206 you find the words of the Nicene Creed. That is the creed we use this morning to confess our faith. Page 206. I Seated, we sing him 677.
be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is from the, uh, uh, the first reading we had this morning from Revelation chapter 7. We'll look at selected verses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During this past year of grace, our Lord has revealed to us once again that He is the Lord of life and the Lord of death. In His wisdom, it pleased Him to call fellow Christians from this congregation, as well as countless Christians from other congregations, to Himself in glory. They've been taken from here to eternity, from earthly life to heavenly life, from temporal life to eternal life. And every time this occurred, God witnessed our sorrow, He saw our sadness, He observed our grief. And yet He did not let us grieve as if there were no hope. Through his word, God graciously and generously brought us comfort and relief so that in spite of our sadness, we recognize that he was able to give us a peace which the world could not and cannot give. He proved himself to be the helper of the helpless. All this also worked for our good since it was the means by which we have been drawn closer to our gracious Heavenly Father. As I mentioned earlier this morning, in the calendar of the Christian church year, November 1st is the day set aside <clears throat> as the festival of All Saints, or as we call it often, All Saints Day. This is the day that the church has designated for remembering the apostles, the martyrs, and our loved ones who have died in the faith. Today we remember, we remember all of those triumphant saints who have preceded us. Today as we remember our departed loved ones, God wants us to catch a glimpse of heaven. The book of Revelation, written by the disciple John, is the last great prophecy of our Lord regarding this world and all the activities in it. In this book we find many visions that deal with the ongoing, everyday struggle between the church and all of the forces of evil. These visions deal with the struggle between Christians and the devil, the struggle between God's people and the devil's helpers. They tell of the constant cruelty inflicted upon Christians by all of these enemies. And yet this same series of prophecies always foretells the certain victory of the Lord and His Church. After the victory is completed and the battle in this world is finished, God's people will enter the kingdom of glory in heaven. They will live in, an, in all eternity in a happiness and peace which is virtually impossible to describe or to understand. This is the vision of heaven given in our text from the book of Revelation. Now the Lord commanded St. John to record, record what he saw regarding heaven so that those still struggling with the enemies of the soul in this world might be comforted. He wrote this. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. These words describe the church very well commanded by her Lord to make disciples of all nations. The church has broken down the 
wall that separates every nation, tribe, people, and language. The church, you and me and all the others before us, has done this with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. We have shown the love of God and Christ in our lives, and thus touched people who have come into contact with us. God may have used us to help sinners become saints. <coughs> it is the power of this gospel message of love in Christ which has made these saints in heaven victorious over the power of evil forever. The vision in our text is a vision of the saints already in heaven. We call this the church triumphant. St. John points to this when he describes the way the saints are dressed. They are wearing the white robes of victory. These white robes indicate that those who now wear them are holy. And in addition, they are all waving palm branches. These branches symbolize their victory over evil and thus their eternal peace and joy in heaven. This church in heaven is a happy church. It's no longer afflicted by the problems that are part of this life and this world in which we live. The elders said to John, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. To be with the saints, to be in the company of the angels, is wonderful. In fact, we can't even imagine what that means, to be continually face to face with the Father, face to face with our blessed Savior, face to face with our Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who led us to such joy and happiness. When we think about the lives of the saints, among whom we are, among whom are not only our departed ones from this congregation, but also others who have died in the faith, we have a sense of heavenly peace in our own hearts. We would not wish them back among us. We could not ask anything more for them. You see, they have everything they need. They have already reached the goal that God established for them eternal life with Him forever. I've been asked more than once if I am absolutely certain that all of this is true. You see, the devil is very cunning. He tries to sow the seeds of doubt and uncertainty in our minds. If we knew that such a life was possible for all of us, but that we could not have it for some reason, the glorious hope of the resurrection would fade from our minds. <coughs> Life would not be worth living. But St. John immediately wipes out the idea that the story of the pearly gates, the golden streets, and the light that dims, that never dims, is pure fiction. Our hope becomes sure when we hear that great hymn which the saints in heaven sing so loudly. As St. John looked at the scene of the saints gathered before the throne of God, he also heard their great hymn of thanks and thank, of praise and thanksgiving. They joyously and loudly sang, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. St. John could tell that the saints were sincere in their praises to God, who had revealed his plan of salvation to them. They were there where they could see him with their own eyes, where they could see with their own eyes what through faith they had always believed about heaven while here on earth. They saw the scars of the five holy wounds of their blessed Savior. They now knew that Calvary 
that on Calvary, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. As St. Paul writes in his second letter to the Corinthians, they could now understand what a glorious reconciliation God had accomplished through Jesus in those bitter hours of suffering and eternal salvation that he freely offers to every single person in the past as well as those who are yet to be born. In fact, to all of mankind. To be free from sin. To know that Satan with all his tricks and schemes and cunning could no longer touch them. To be certain that the fear of eternal death could never overtake them. This was the great theme of their song. Only in heaven could they properly thank their glorious Savior, who had totally and completely crushed the serpent's head. This vision is a picture of people who also understand perfectly what it meant to be redeemed. Their song does not have a single syllable in it of any merit or worthiness on their own part. Their song doesn't praise themselves or the good that they may have done while they were living. Instead, they praise the constant and endless love that God had for them in Christ. Seeing themselves, they could now finally realize that they had done nothing to be restored to the image in which God had created them, the image of perfection. They were happy to know that their will and desires were now completely like God's once again. And thus they could never get tired of serving the Lord with gladness. This is their everlasting happiness. This is their everlasting privilege. What well, brings us to know for certain that our great hope of eternal life is real is that we too can sing this same hymn of redemption. We have in our hands the word of God which tells us in clear and in accurate statements the truth that is difficult to humanly understand. As we read the word of salvation, or as we hear it proclaimed, God's Holy Spirit brings us to faith and keeps us in saving faith. We believe that at the time of our baptism, we were brought to such faith. And God has been very busy since that time maintaining such faith, such saving faith in us. He does this each and every day as he leads us along the paths of righteousness that end in heaven. This is the only life that, we, that can be worth having. A life of everlasting joy and happiness with the Lord. So this day we remember our departed loved ones. Having had this picture of them, could we still weep? Shouldn't we allow God to wipe away any tears that might be in our eyes? Surely we should not weep for ourselves, because now more than ever, we have the certainty that we too, we too, shall be with the Lord. If this is the memory we have of our departed loved ones already safe in our Savior's arms, then our eyes will more than ever be fixed upon God's great goal for us. And that goal is to be with Him forever. We can only chant the great hymns of redemption with feeble voices right now. But in time, we will be privileged to stand before God's glorious throne and sing with this great and glorious choir. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship the... We stand for the prayer of the church. Excuse me.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies, and our souls, and all things into your keeping. <clears throat> Deliver us in your righteousness from all that would harm the body or assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, send your spirit to the ministers of the church who bring the good news of Christ's death and resurrection that they may work through the preaching of this gospel to gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain us all to the day of Christ's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gentle Lord, visit the homes of your people that they may be places where faith is nurtured and where we learn to live our new lives in holiness and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are the persecuted, who suffer for your sake, and whose witness calls all to faithfulness. Bring peace to the nations, make our leaders wise, just, and honorable, and deliver us, deliver us from terror, violence, and oppression. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, comfort us by your abiding presence and satisfy all who call upon you in need, in need this day, especially those listed in our bulletin this morning, as well as those we personally name in our hearts at this time. Grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, release them from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, be with your church and all her members who belong to you by baptism and faith. At the bidding of the Lamb, our shepherd, give us ears to hear your word and faith to receive him in, in his blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us, who now rest from their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we pray this day for Reverend Eamon Ferguson, who is currently pastor in Mount City, Missouri. Heavenly Father, we have extended a call to him. And we ask Heavenly Father that as he considers this call to our congregation here in Dorset, and as he considers the call that he currently has in Mount City, that the Holy Spirit would lead him to make a God-pleasing decision. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of perceiving grace, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom and through whom all honor and glory is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May we see it as we worship the Lord with our offerings. to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, of things hoped for, though not yet seen, leaving, a, leaving an example and encouragement for us who walk now by faith and not by sight. Grant that we may faithfully eat and drink this holy supper of your Son's body and blood, and in the union of his mystical body, the, the Church, be joined in unending praise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Elijah, and all the faithful prophets, the blessed apostles and evangelists, the holy martyrs, and all the saints in glory who fought the good fight of faith before us. Hear us, hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. May be seated our final hymn 632.
Okay, let's see what you got going on here this week. You've got the church calendar, of course, right on the, one of the pages. Um, yes, you did have a call meeting last Sunday, and you extended the call uh, to Reverend Eamon Ferguson at uh, Mount City. So hopefully he would have received the documents uh, you know, later this week. Generally, you get them the same week as once they're sent out. So sometimes it takes two or three weeks to hear back. Um, Sometimes it's a tough decision between, you know, coming to a new congregation or staying where he's at. It can take a little bit longer, but uh, all in good time, the Lord is in charge. All right. All right, looks like quilting. Did you just start quilting? For a couple weeks? Months, okay. You know, again... Every congregation is different. I'm trying to remember who does what. A little bit uh, interesting sometimes. Church council is meeting this week. Elders meeting this week. Um, here's an important one. If you come in the office on Wednesday, Jeannie's not going to be here. <laughs> Confirmation coming up. Bible study. Uh, looks like Reverend Neubauer from uh, Park Rapids is leading, huh? Also, I guess that's it. We will have Bible study. It's not quarter after ten, is it? Quarter after nine. Oh, it's quarter after, huh? Yeah, it's quarter after. Is it quarter after ten for sure? Okay. I wasn't sure if that clock was quite right or not. We had the discussion this morning earlier when I was uh, greeting the organist and so forth. So um, we'll have Bible study. Um, I'll give you a few minutes. It's going to be on the uh, epistle reading from from where? Oh yeah, from First John chapter three. I need another hour of sleep. <laughs> so we'll start that. Oh, ten thirty, maybe twenty to eleven. We'll try and be done in about forty-five minutes or a little bit less. It's not a long study today. It's only I think uh, three verses, so shouldn't be too bad. But it's a great it's it's a great reading as are all of the readings uh, uh, that God has provided us. Anything else we need to mention before we, before we end? Otherwise, don't forget, I believe there's fellowship for sure. Coffee and goodies. So, have a great week in the Lord. Um, I'm coming back, but not for a few weeks. I would normally be here the first Sunday in December. I'm leaving on vacation. I'm going to be gone for two Sundays. So, uh, But I'll miss you all. I think you've been on flying out and uh, praying that all goes well that day. Have a great week in the Lord.